Isaac here from ePianos. Welcome to another showroom live where we show you exactly what we've got in our showroom and you can see what you think. The first one I'm going to show you is this CVP 509 in a beautiful rosewood finish which is really really nice to look at. Um, it was the top of the range at the time. When the 500 series was new, the 09 of the range was always the top model and this is the top model so it is top spec. Um, let's have a listen. I notice is actually the touch of the piano. Now you've got wooden keys on the piano here, which is really, really essential in my opinion if you're a piano player, um, because it emulates that of a real traditional acoustic piano. Um, and you want that with digital stuff, you don't want to compromise. Um, and this gives you the best of both worlds. And that sound, these, you've got two speakers here, speaker underneath, um, big speaker, and it's just it's a big sound. It's not even full volume. If you went any higher, you'd definitely annoy the neighbours, that's for sure. But it's beautiful. The keys really make you control the light and shade, the hard and soft. Really beautiful sound. Um, and there are loads of voices on the CVP. The thing about the CVP series is they do so much. The V in, in CVP stands for versatile, and it is just that. There are, there are rhythms, there are voices, um, lots of bells and whistles, really. And I know that some traditional players think, well, I don't want that, but I think it can actually enhance your playing, and I'm going to show you how now. Um, I'm going to take a song. You probably recognise it. It was very popular while, a while back, um, and I'm just going to play it on the piano, um, first of all, and then I'll, I'll show you something else. So here's the song, I'm sure you know the tune. Sounds lovely on a piano, very nice, very pretty, um, but sometimes you want a little bit more. You want drums, you want bass, you want, you want a bit of a backing to, to fill it out a little bit. Um, and if your drummer friend's on holiday and, and your bass player's at work, uh, you, you can't, but with the CVPs you can. Um, and I'll show you how. You've got the style section, which is basically the rhythms and the backing section. Um, and you've got all of these styles uh, of, of drum beats. You've got pop rock, ballad, dance, swing jazz, all these categories. Um, and I've picked pop and rock. And if you look on the screen, you have uh, pages and pages of styles. All of these different styles on, on these pages. You've got five pages in pop and rock and you can scroll through all of them. Um, I'm gonna pick 70s easy pop. Now when I press play, you get a drum beat. So I could, also think that sounds a bit flat. There's not much going on. It's just the backing and just the piano. What about the bass? What about the other instruments? So what you do is you press the accompaniment button, tap that on. Now, whatever I play, the instrument will follow me. And I think you'll be really surprised at how great it sounds. Let's have a listen. OTS link. Now what OTS link does is it recommends you voices. So whatever style you pick it will suggest to you voices that it thinks works for that style. Um, so now when I play you'll hear a difference um, and I think this, this particular instrument sounds really good with this song. Here we go.
awesome. Just, you know, seconds, and I've lifted, amplified, transformed that song in, in the, the click of a few buttons, and you can do it with any song, any song you like, any song you've learned. You can go through all, these, all of the styles that are built in, um, it's not just pop and rock, you can do ballad, dance, ballroom, swing and jazz, I'll click a random one, cool jazz, play a chord. I feel like it should be a dinner party, it's brilliant, it's awesome. And you can play through. So easy. Let's listen to some of the other instruments. I do want to talk about is that particular sax sound. Can you hear that? That 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 um, slide. Now that particular slide and that particular style is is called super articulation voices. And this particular one is called super articulation two. Um, and what that means is the way Yamaha have sampled it, the way they've recorded the sound is so refined and so specific um, that it gives you all these nuances and it just makes, you know, it's very subtle but it just makes all the difference. So you've got the jazz sax, when you play an octave it does a slide. If I put my foot on the pedal, it changes the attack of the note. So now when I play, see if you can just pick out the little articulations because I think they make all the difference. Have a listen. not just the saxophones actually, you can go through any of the voices within the instrument and you'll find lots of different articulations like that. The acoustic guitar for example, you'll hear the fret noises. Can you hear those little fret noises, all the nuances? All the little slides. Really, really pretty and you get that with top end about the CVPs, they they give you this real sense of um, realism within the voices. You, they don't sound fake. They sound really um, refined and, and crisp, um, and you can get lost in it. I do playing down here. I do get lost in it. Before I move on, I want to talk quickly about the differences between the CVP series and the CLP series because it's a question we get asked quite a lot here at E Pianos. Um, so I thought I'd clear it up. The CVP range. V standing for versatile, like I said, um, gives you so much. It gives you styles, voices, rhythms. It's like having a built-in recording studio um, built into a, a traditional piano, basically. It gives you the best of both worlds in, in varying degrees, um, depending on which model. But in short, that's what it is. The, v, the CVP range has a lot on it. You've got styles. It enhances your playing. You can play songs. You can save songs. You can record songs. Um, you can compose. It's it's all there, ready for you to to play. Um, and if you get the top, if you can spend the money and you can get the top end, you also get a really good piano as well. Whereas the CLP range is Yamaha's flagship digital piano range that looks, feels, and sounds like a traditional piano. Not many bells and whistles. They do have some features, and I will go into them in a second. But ultimately, at heart, they are for piano players, you know, they, they, they feel like real pianos, they've got the real keys, the real wood of the keys, the sound has been really crisply, refinely um, sampled, so you really have no difference between the acoustic um, and the digital. Um, if you're a family and you've got kids that are learning, your teacher will be over the moon to hear that your child is playing on a clavinova, because it's just such a reputable brand of digital piano, um, and in my opinion, probably the best ever really in the world. There isn't a better um, digital piano out there just because Yamaha have made pianos for so long, um, they know what they're doing. Um, and on that note, let's move on to the CLP 635, um, which is this one here. It is the second one in the range. You've got 65, 35, 45, 75, and then the 85 over there. I want to show you this one in particular because it's not too much. It doesn't break the bank account as being the second one in the range. 
don't have to pay too much for it, um, but you get quite a lot as well, quality-wise, you do get a lot. Um, I will shut up and play the piano so you can hear it. Have a listen. So the sound you're hearing there is the CFX Grand, which is Yamaha's new sort of flagship uh, digital piano sound, um, emulating a big £100,000 grand piano. Um, and it's faultless, it's beautiful. It's, it, you really hear the dynamics in it. And it's even nicer to play because of the keys on the 635. They are synthetic ivory uh, and ebony key tops, which means that the, the touch of them, the actual physical feeling of them, it feels like a traditional piano um, and emulates that. So it just gives a little bit more um, realism when you're playing. Um, and that as well is, is said within the escapement mechanism, which is an, another bit of resistance in the keys here. Just another added layer of um, dynamic, bit of resistance, emulating, again, a traditional piano. Makes all the difference, and I know that teachers will be over the moon to hear that they're playing on something like this, because it does just feel like a real piano. If you played um, a grand piano, acoustic grand piano, for an hour, and you played this, you would feel very little difference. And that is the aim, really, is to bridge the gap between the traditional acoustic and the 635 does that. Now, something that not necessarily you would look for in a traditional piano, but nonetheless I think can be very useful, is the recording functionality. Um, it's an element that, as a musician and a composer myself, I use quite a lot. It's really handy to be able to record layers and, and add layers and build them and get yourself a song um, as, as easy as possible and as accessibly as possible. Um, and the, the Clavinovas do that, which is really handy. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that now and see if we can get a bit of a song going. Um, I'm going to change the piano sound, click of a button, and now I've got the Bosendorfer sound, which is a beautiful, soft, sort of mellow... press the record button once and you you record it's, it's that easy it's ready for me to record now um, and I'm gonna play something let's see what comes out So that has recorded, let's stop that, save. Now I could play that back, it's done. And it's saved onto here now, so I could turn it off, walk away, come back two days later, it will still be here. Um, play it back, listen to it back, see if you're happy. If you are, why not add another layer? You know, it's, it's really easy. You've got more than one voice on the, the CLP series and on the 635 you've got 34. So you've got 34 voices ranging from pianos, strings, um, electric pianos, organs, they're all in here. Um, I'm gonna sift through now and see which one I want to pick. I think I'd like a bass in this, just to give a, a sort of low end layer. Um, I like the acoustic bass um, on this, which is really nice. Um, and I think it'd be quite subtle in this piece particularly. Um, so let's record over the top. Three clicks, and you're there. Now I'm going to press play first because I don't want it to. Um, I don't want to record the bass straight away. I want it to come in a little bit later. So I'm going to press play. Plays the piece.
save it. If you're happy with it, again, it will store. If not, why not add another layer? I'm going to pick strings this time. Now there are two types of strings on here. You've got normal strings and then you've got what's called slow strings. I particularly like the slow strings because they, um, they fade in a little bit more. So it doesn't just come straight in with a harsh string sound. It, it sort of it flows in a little bit more naturally when you play the keys. You sort of hear it flowing, ebbing and flow. So I'm going to now add a layer of that to that track. And I think I do want it coming in straight away this time. I'm going to play one note up here and see what happens. yourself a song um, and if you want to you could export that there's a USB port hidden away under here to um, you know not hinder on the beautiful look of the, the CLP um, and you can export it onto a, a USB stick either as a WAV or a MIDI file um, MIDI would allow you to put it onto a logic session garage band Sibelius um, so you can go in and edit and, and, and further the, the development of the track if you think it's ready and uh, ready to go Audio, WAV is probably your best bet. Put it onto YouTube, SoundCloud, it's, it's really easy. Um, and you do it all on the screen here. Um, but it's just great, it's just such a good tool to have. Um, and it doesn't take away from the quality. You know, it's not it's too much either. It's not overwhelmingly um, tricky to do. There's a lot, it's very simple, very simple screen. Um, and it's just a nice tool to have. And I think, again, if you're a piano player and a musician, Having something like that is really handy. So, on to the next one. I want to show you two digital pianos that at first glance look exactly the same. Um, you've got the YDPS 54 here on my right, and on the left you've got the YDP S34. Like I say, they do look, apart from the colour of these two in the showroom, exactly the same. So what are the differences? Well, the YDPS 54 has two 20 watt speakers. Um, whereas the YDPS34 has two 8 watt speakers. So you get a bit more bite on the S54, a bit more oomph, especially on the lower end. Um, the other difference is the keys, which is, again, like I said, very, very important. The S54 has the GH3 mechanism. So these keys are synthetic, ebony and ivory finished, um, which I think makes all the difference um, and does justify the price being a bit more on the S54. Um, Whereas the S34 has the GHS mechanism, so they're not ebony, uh, ebony or ivory. Um, again, very good price-wise if you're pushed um, for, for cash. It does the job, you know, as long as you're playing, that's the main thing. If you can stretch to the a couple of hundred extra for the S54, I would always recommend it, just because of the keys, it does make a big difference. But ultimately, both great instruments. I'm going to play them both for you now. say the S54 definitely ticks um, a lot of the boxes, especially when it comes to the keys and the sound. Those speakers do make all the difference. Um, but both fantastic instruments, depending on price range, depending on the level you're at, if your kids are just starting out, possibly the S34 is your best option because you don't want to invest too much money into it. And they both, if I show you, look awesome. It's a really slick, modern design, black and white. 
here in the showroom. Um, but they're both great. S54, I think, just pushes it um, slightly in terms of quality. But again, like I say, they're both brilliant. Why not come and have a look? Come into the showroom. We're in Banbury in Oxfordshire. Um, if you've got any questions at all, give us a call or drop us an email. And um, thanks for watching Showroom Live. See you soon. Bye-bye.